Hey up there, welcome to sunny Anglesey. If you're wondering why I've got my hat on backwards, it's because I've just been told that when you're a factory rider, that's what you're supposed to do. And yes, this weekend, I'm a factory rider once more because Baron Von Tumble couldn't make it to this round of the No Limits Championship at Anglesey. So, they've drafted me in again to ride the CF650 that's actually a 700. And there she is, look, in all of glory. We've had a day on the bike yesterday, bit of testing, it all went swimmingly well. You can't see right now because there's a tyre warmer on there, but we've got a brand new tyre in the back of the bike, so uh, should be a good one. We've got qualifying in about 20 minutes, so I'm going to go get dressed. Seeing as you're not allowed to run helmet cameras and microphones in your helmet when you're racing, just because it's obviously way too dangerous, I thought I'd run you through qualifying in the glorious format of voiceover. In all fairness, I think even if I could run a, a microphone in my helmet, you wouldn't have been able to hear what I was saying because the bike is super, super noisy. Anyway, this is my qualifying lap, my fast-ish lap that, um, or certainly my fastest lap that put me in fourth on the grid. So I'll talk you, I'll talk you through my lap. It was a fairly clear lap, apart from this fellow. I had to roll a little bit just to, uh, just to get round him. Once I was past him, no problem. I reckon I only lost a tenth or two. As you can see, absolutely glorious day. So there was plenty of grip. There was a couple of couple of people on bigger bikes complaining that there wasn't a lot of grip, but. It was absolutely fine on the uh, on the on the super twin. So down the back straight, flat out, arms in, knees in, getting out the air, and then hard on the brakes into this really tight right under down four gears. And I can see them just in front of me, and I felt like I was catching them up a real little bit. So I thought maybe, you know, it could potentially be a, a half decent lap. I wasn't sure who it was in front of me, but I knew they were they were going at a reasonable pace. So. You've got to be real careful coming out this corner because as you go down that dip, the back wheel goes light. Not so much on the on a, a bike with 100 horsepower, but you know when you're on a super bike, it can spin up loads. This bit, the corkscrew, that's really physical, and there's a big dip there, so you've got to be careful the thing doesn't bottom out. And then add on the gas onto the start finish straight. So uh, yeah, it's a short lap, and that was my qualifying lap. Unfortunately, not a pole setting lap. And here we are, back in the pits. Yeah. What are we thinking? Oh, it is hot out there. Well, that's uh, qualifying done. I don't know where I've sort of where I am in it, but um, yeah, I did. I say done. I didn't stay up for the full session because um, what's that for? Full. Oh, okay, yeah. that's all right. Yeah, oh, it's three on a row, isn't it? Mm. Oh, second row. Oh well, second row. That's all right. Um, I think, well I know I can go a bit quicker, it always takes me a few laps to get into the swing of it and uh, we just we just caught the, caught the a slower. A lot of traffic at times. Yeah, well, too much traffic, we just caught the slower riders up too soon, so I didn't, get, I didn't have enough time to get in the swing of it really, so I thought it's alright, we, uh, we can do something with that, get a stick on a podium, flat out. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's Saturday afternoon. You're Anglesey Circuit and we are going racing, ladies and gentlemen! Ah. Well, qualified P4, that's the second row, three in a row. Uh, gonna have to get a good start, but I think, I think if I get a good start, I can... There's, 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 four, there's four of us that are a little bit faster than the rest. So I think it'll be it'll be a bit of a battle for who gets the win. The kid who qualified first was about a second lap faster than me in qualifying, but on my quick lap, I did have a bit of traffic and I've not really got up to speed. So I think I've got a good half second in me, maybe a second. So I think I think I can stay with him. Whether I can beat him or not, well, who 
knows? Time will tell. Time will tell. But we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see. It'll be a good one, it'll be a laugh. It'll be hot, so I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I'm keeping hydrated, which is very important. Um, well, I'm ready to go. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what we can do. Well, this is the first race, so I am P4 on the grid. That's the second row, waiting for the lights to go on and then go out. And they do. I try my best to get a good start, but unfortunately, that's not what happened. I lost a few places off the start. There's Tommy Downs, the CF Moto rider, just uh, just passed me on the inside. Tommy always seems to get good starts. I'm not really sure how he does it. Anyway, I know I've got a faster bike than Tommy, so I'm fairly confident that if I can just hang on to his shirt tails onto the back straight, I will be able to pass him. Concentrating on getting a decent drive out of this corner. Tommy's a little bit wide, so that'll have uh, ruined his speed a little bit. Slipstream Tommy, straight past him, no bother at all. And if you look in the distance, the rider about to go into first place is the very, very famous... Will Holland from JHS Racing, so he's he's gone wide but managed to get into the lead, and it looks like I'm now fourth. Gaz Johnson, one place in front of me, so he's got a couple of bike lengths, but I know I'll be able to catch him up. Doesn't look like I've made much time there. So Will is on his very very fast SV650, but bang, he's unfortunately snapped a crank. Will had a had a face on for the rest of the weekend because. Yeah, that was his fast bike and he was hoping to do quite well and he was doing quite well, he was leading the race but unfortunately that's what happens if you ask too much out of an SV650 so onto the back straight again and that's Gaz Johnson in front of me just having a look behind him and he is on a bike that's not quite as fast as mine so I've just been able to out drag him there now first place that's a young Scottish lad called Oliver Barr now he's got a few bike lengths on me but I reckon or I was thinking at this point uh, that I can catch him. I was fairly confident that, um, you know, I think this is only lap three, so I've there's, there's time to catch him, and I've caught him up a little bit. There were uh, one or two places on the track that he was quicker than me. Oh, he's, uh, he's had to roll there because he saw someone laying on the floor. But, yeah, there's a few places on the track that he was quicker than me, a few bits that I was quicker than him. This corner, this fast one onto the back straight, I felt like I could really, really, really him in, so I've managed to get into his, into his slipstream. Probably pulled out a little bit too early there because, yeah, he's, he's got a very fast bike and woo, nearly wipes that fella's nose. But yeah, there's a, there's a few places on the in the slower bits of the track that I know I can catch him up. He's um, yeah, he's got a bit of a pulled a bit of a gap there, unfortunately. But looks like the uh, looks like the back markers have slowed him up a tiny bit. The back markers can sometimes work in your favour, other times not. You just got to be really careful that you don't oil them into the gravel because they get really upset when you do that, and so do the marshals and um, and officials. So, not that he's too bothered. He nearly wiped that one out, but yeah, that's not a problem. Everyone, uh, everyone came out of it unscathed. With a lap or two left now, I'm I'm starting to think that he's probably got a bit too much of a gap. Even though I, you know I'll I'll try my hardest to stay with him and catch him, but. Um, yeah, the, the, the back markers just didn't really work in my favour that time. And that is 10 laps round Anglesey Coastal Circuit and second place, which first loser, but, you know, we'll take the points and the trophy. Thank you very much. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Oh, well, that was a lot the same as Croft, to be honest. I um, got into second and then, uh, you know, I was... I was as as quick as the kid who was leading, but I just um, I just I just it ended up timing itself wrong with back markers, so we caught the uh, slower lads just at the wrong just at the wrong time for me. Really, I had a, a few little lunges to try and pass him, but there was always there was always another bike in the way that just just made it a bit more difficult. So he managed to just get a bit of a jump and uh, and beat me, but the bike was sweet again. Makes a big difference with the new tyre on, so that was good. 
just got to try a bit harder next time and see if we can win it. So that's it for today. Um, we've only had one race on a Saturday. We've got three more races today, uh, tomorrow. And because I went a little bit faster in the race, that means I get to start from second on the grid. So front row, that'll make it a lot easier tomorrow. In the meantime, I think we've got somewhere better to be. It's hard work this racing lark with all the setup that we've done and all the laps we did yesterday and a long 10 lap race today and it's really hot so I think we're gonna go to the beach well it's Sunday and it's gonna be another boiling hot one here at Anglesey someone's coming on his plan of look um, and also, I need to apologise if the footage from yesterday was a little bit distorted because there's a, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of a crack in the uh, lens on that GoPro, so I'm going uh, to change that GoPro to this GoPro that I'm filming on now. <clears throat> so we've got three races to do today, and really, I need to win. I was frustrated that I didn't win yesterday. I felt like I could, we just caught the back markers at the wrong time, so, um, yeah. Let's have another go today. Here we are then, race two, Sunday morning. As soon as that lady uh, shuffles off the grid, the lights will go on and then out. And again, we'll try our best to make a good start. Out they go, and is it a good start? Is it buggery? I can't, for the life of me, get that thing off the line. And again, I've lost a bunch of places. There's, uh, there's Will from JHS having a bit of a go. So, yeah, fourth place again at this point. Now, I know them three in front of me, I can I can battle with. I know I've got the pace to stay, stay with them and hopefully beat them. And I know I've got a fast bike as well, so I can, uh, I can rely on the horsepower down this back straight to catch them up. And then, luckily, I've got reasonable brakes, so at the end of the straight, I can finish off my... Uh, finish off catching them up. A couple of them have gone wide there, there's Oliver a bit wide and it looks like with that line he's going to run wide on the exit of that corner and he does. So can I nip past him way up there if he doesn't take me out? So third now, that's Baz in front of me. I know from, from qualifying and from the first race that I've got the pace to beat Baz but Oliver's not letting happen, he's trying to get up the, around the outside of me. He's still around the outside of me and I might not be able to see him now and he's just about to reappear there. Way up there as a big slide, nearly takes us both out. It's uh, it's hotting up at Anglesey. So now I'm in third and the uh, the two in front of me have got a big lead, but again, them, them strong brakes in the CF helped me catch them right up in one foul swoop. Now I need to uh, I need to be getting getting on with this because I can see Gaz in front of me or in front of us all just starting to pull out and pull a bit of a gap. So I need to get past Baz as soon as possible, and I think into this second corner is where I'll do it. There we go, straight up the inside. No bother. I've always been strong in that little section, so uh, yeah, that helps. Unfortunately, just coming out of this corner, the bike was a little bit lazy because I let the revs run a bit low, and he's had another go. Get back, you bastard. There you go. So, so flat out now, down this back straight, arms in, knees in, toes in, trying to catch Gaz up, and I've caught him up a little bit. I've dragged him. Dragged a few bike lengths on him, but still not there. He has another look over his shoulder, and yeah, that's not going to make you go any faster, Gaz. So I've managed to get past him on the power because my bike is a little bit faster than his, and uh, and keep him behind me on the brakes. Now I'm in the lead. Now I've got to con really concentrate on just putting some really sensible laps together. Don't do anything silly. Just just hit all your apexes. And try and get try and get over the line first so this is a few laps later I've led the race for a bit longer and all of a sudden there's Oliver Barr he's caught me napping I'm not afraid to say it I think I've rested on my laurels a little bit too much and yeah he's, he's nipped past so and all of a sudden he's, he looks like he's got a bit of pace so yeah he's, he's pulled a tiny bit of a gap but I know I've got the pace so concentrate now and, and try and get him back I want to be as close to him as possible so that if he makes the slightest mistake, I can pounce and any opportunity I can pass him. So we're catching up some bat markers and that always throws a bit of a, uh, a cat amongst the pigeon and, and 
looks like he's going to catch him up at just the wrong time. So he's going to go tight. I'm going to go wide. He has to, he has to roll, and I've gone around the outside. Held him off on the brakes. Is he going to try and come up the inside? No, he doesn't do it. So back into the lead, and I've got these three backmarkers to contend with. This is where you worry now, because if I go the wrong side of them, then Ollie's going to choose the right side, and he's going to get, he's going to get me past. So where do we go? Where do we go? Inside, outside, inside of him, inside of him. So a couple of laps left now. Uh, I'm still in the lead. Ah, oh, and then I miss a gear. Miss a gear going into the fast one, and I know exactly what's going to happen now. I've lost way too much time going around that corner and lost all my speed on the exit. So any second now. There we go. There he is. He's powered past me because I lost too much time missing a gear. Is the gearbox going out? Am, am, I, am I not being rough enough with the gearbox? Is it me? Is it the bike? I'm thinking about all these things now. I just want to get the bike to the end of the race. Is it going to do it again? Coming out this corner. Oh, and then there's another miss gear. So, so now Ollie's got a bit of a bit of a bit of a jump on me now. And with this fella trying his level best to run me onto the grass, looking over his shoulder the wrong way, and then drifting over. Yeah, he's got he's got too big a lead, and it doesn't look like it doesn't look like I can, I can get him back. So, once again, crossed the line in second place. Had to settle for first loser, but it's a few points and another trophy. Well, that's race two done, um, and I didn't win it. Uh, I got into the lead with about. I think about halfway through the race, maybe four or five laps in, I got into the lead and then uh, just started to have a couple of real minor gearbox issues. I don't know if it was me not being positive enough with the gear shift, getting a bit tired because it's so hot, or you know maybe the gearbox is on its way out. I'm not really sure. So we're gonna we're gonna adjust the position of the gear selector for, for the next one just to see if we can make that make that uh, that gear shift action a bit more positive with my foot. Because uh, yeah, I would like to win one, and I think I would have had that in the bag had I not had the uh, the few missed gears. So uh, we've got two more to go. So hopefully, um, I'll have cooled off by then. The bike will have cooled off by then, and we'll hopefully be able to stick on the top of the podium. One of the coolest things about racing this CF Moto is it's not just a race bike; it's a bit of a development project. So there's always bits and pieces that we're trying to trying to develop and work on and, and, and try and make better and today's challenge is um, is this look if you can see there the, the radiator has just been catching on the front wheel as I'm braking really hard it's it's just everything's flexing and it's just and the, and, the, and the forks are compressing and it's just touching so I think before long that's gonna go through so what the lads have done they've, they've remade the brackets for the radiator and, and moved it back about half an inch because that's about as much as we could have because obviously the headers are behind there so there's there isn't a lot of room so hopefully we'll go out today or go out in the next race and there won't be any touching because touching is not always allowed well i've just been told that i broke the lap record around angsty coastal circuit for a super twin in that last race which i was a little bit excited about um, and then they told me that a lap later, the lad who won the race, Oliver Barr, he broke my lap record. Oh well, there's always next time. And here we go, this is, uh, this is race three, I'm second on the grid this time. Let's try and get a better start. Lights go on, lights go out, and yeah, start's even more disappointing than the last race, so I've lost a load more positions. Probably in about sixth or seventh place now, but squeeze past them. Right back to fourth. I can do something with fourth. Let's uh, let's go. Oh, what's happened to Gaz? He's missed a gear or he's had a misfire. That's cost me a little bit of time. I've had to run wide. In fact, it's cost me a little bit of time, two positions. So not to worry. Should be able to get past these two if I can have a really good clean drive through there. That's Will uh, Will Holland from JHS in front and I'm not sure who number 34 is but uh, yeah they've both got fast bikes so can I do them on the brakes oh he tries to get past Will on the brakes can he do it can he make it stick no they both run wide 
and yeah, I don't get a position, so I'll have to I'll have to try again next time. Onto the back straight. I know I'm strong round this fast corner, so if I can get a real good drive out of there and get in his slipstream, I can do him. And can I catch Will? He's got a fast bike and he's pretty strong on the brakes as well, so yeah, can't get him on the brakes, but I've caught him up a little bit. Now I need to just reel him in and pass him as soon as I can because I can see the two riders in front. That'll be um, Baz and Oliver. Right, am I close enough to pass him? Can I get up the inside? Oh, yes, right, third now. Third now, concentrate, right. Keep Will behind me and catch the two in the lead. Looking forward now, the two in the lead are a little bit further in front of me and Will has got a fast bike, so he might outdrag me on this on the back straight. Ah, he has done, and he's hard on the brakes as well. Can he get it stopped? Yep, he can get it stopped. Right, I've got it. I've got it all to do again now. This is getting frustrating because I can see them two pulling away. Right, let's try again. Am I close enough? Which side to go? Inside, outside. He's expecting me up the inside. I'll go around the outside. Can't make it happen. It's too hard on the brakes. But I know I am faster on this back onto this back straight so can I get any slipstream he's got a fast bike that might be his number two bike but it's not slow in the slipstream I can just pull alongside him but then it just just can't quite get right in front of him and he's strong on the brake so even though he's run a little bit wide it doesn't matter because he's kept held the position same again let's have another go let's try and get up the inside of him this time can I do it? Can I make it happen? Yes, hard on the brakes. A bit of a block pass, but it doesn't matter if you get in front of him. Let's just hope that he uh, he doesn't out drag me onto down that back straight again because that is a fast a fast SV650. Has he done it? Yes, there he is. Ah. Come on! I need to get in front of him. This is getting annoying now. Right, let's have another go. Get in the slipstream, get tucked in, arms in, knees in, tight as you can, head down. Can I do it? Can I do it? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Am I far enough in front of him? I can just see a wheel, I can just see a wheel. Oh, he's got it again. He's making that SV650 pretty bloody wide. Oh, come on, Will, get out the way. That's enough's enough now. Stop playing silly buggers. He's a little bit wide there, and I can see some back markers tight, so I'm going to go around the outside, and yes, that's how to do it. He'll have blocked himself in with that back marker on the uh, on the CB500, so it looks like it looks like he's behind me, and he's staying behind me. So who's next? Right, we've got, we've got one lap to go now. I'm in third place, and that's Baz just in front of me next on the road. Luckily for me, he got tangled up with that back marker a little bit, and it's, uh, it's meant I could catch him up. I know I can beat him, and I know I'm quicker than him, but it's one thing being quicker, it's another thing getting past him, and he has got a quick bike, it pulled away from me uh, quite substantially around that corner, I'm quick round here though, so if I can get his slip in his slipstream, I might just be able to drive past him on the straight. Can I do it? No, that's a fast bike. What, where's this back marker going to go? We're both up the inside, he's late on the brakes, can I get it stopped? Yes he can. I'm running out of time now, we're on the last lap. Where can I pass him? Where can I pass him? Right, can I go around the outside of him here? That's too long away around. That isn't going to happen. Switch to the other side. Can I go around the outside of him at the bottom? Around the outside of him at the bottom of the hill puts me at the inside of him there. Blocks him off. I'm in front. Second place. Can I keep him behind me? Nice and tidy through there. Get on the gas. Don't look behind you. Head down over the line. And another P2. That time, though, I was fairly happy with P2 because it was a, a hard-fought race. Oh, well, that's another race done. Another P2. Getting a little bit frustrated now because I do want to win one, but um, that race was a little bit more drama-filled, to be honest. On the, um, on the first lap, Gaz had a bit of a misfire. Um, and I, I sort of nearly nearly rammed into him, had to take evasive action, nearly went on the grass. Lost a bit of time, so I got tangled up with uh, a couple of other riders. Did a did about three or four laps with Will from JHS, 
on his uh, SV. That was a laugh. Um, managed to get in front of him. Managed to catch second place on the uh, on the last lap and get past him. So yeah, I got P2, but the win was too far away that time, really. So one more left to go. Let's uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can get a win finally after the two rounds of trying. Turns out, rather than being a factory racer, I'm actually a factory development rider because me and Gaz are swapping bikes for this last race just to, so we can compare notes and see what each other's bikes are like so the bodywork's all been swapped that's the bike I was on that's the bike I'll be riding next um, what it does mean is that that elusive win that I've been working so hard to try and get probably isn't going to happen because the bike I'm going to be riding now isn't quite as fast um, it certainly won't have the legs compared to the, the Kawasaki that the, uh, the lad who's been winning the races has got so but you know it's all right um we're here to develop the bike so that when chris comes back he can win some races i actually started the last race of the weekend from p1 on the grid which was nice that was because i'd set the fastest lap in the previous race so i needed to get a good start and it was actually an all right start i lost one position but that's a lot less than i had been losing uh, in, on the other bike I found this bike a lot easier to get off the line, to be honest. I think the fact that it had a, an easier spread of power just made it that bit easier. The other bike's faster. There's Oliver having a bit of a slide there. Yeah, the other bike was faster, but um, yeah, because the power was all at the top, it didn't make it, yeah, it, it wasn't conducive to getting it off the line very well. But because it was so much faster at the top end, it made it quite easy for Gaz to drag past me on the straight, and that's what he did there, so. Uh, a little bit frustrating, but you know, that's that's just how it goes. I thought to myself, if I can try and stay with them for as many laps as I can, that'll give me half a chance of keeping the rest of them behind me. But that I couldn't. They got a, they got a bit of a gap straight away, and uh, yeah, Baz managed to to have a, a bit of a go at passing me. That was him trying down the back straight. He got alongside me and got maybe a wheel in front of me, but I managed to keep him uh, keep him behind me on the brakes. But it wasn't to be, uh, or it wasn't to last, because yeah, that bike's quite fast, and he just managed to power past me, and that time he got past me early enough that I wasn't near enough that I could get past him on the brakes. And it was here, coming out of this left-hander, that uh, that it all went wrong. When I got on the gas and opened the throttle up, there was just no power, or there was some power, but nowhere near enough power. It felt like I was on that uh, GSXR 125 that I'd been riding. So, rolled around a couple of corners. As soon as I realised it wasn't happening, turned the bike off, rolled down the hill, and uh, made my way back to the pits. That was it. That was the end of my race. Well, that is Gav on my old bike. Well, my old bike. The bike I was riding earlier. I'm a leader. Um, and I'm study watching because unfortunately um, the bike stopped. It just lost all power. It didn't. It didn't cut out completely. It just lost all power. So um, hopefully it's nothing too dramatic. But it's the end of the weekend now, so they'll stick the bike in the truck and um, hopefully get it fixed for next time. So, but despite not finishing the last race, what a weekend I've had. It's been such such a blast. Like riding bikes in the sun. It doesn't really get much better, does it? Well, it do there's a few things that are better. But that's only if you're doing them right. Anyway, there's the boys giving it big licks. And that's me, out. Thanks again to everyone at CF Moto UK for letting me be part of this project. The more I ride the bike, the more excited I am about it. Because this isn't just going racing for the sake of going racing. Don't get me wrong, that's a pretty handy benefit as far as I'm concerned. But no, it's going racing to genuinely develop a bike. The end goal for CF Moto's racing department is to be able to offer a bike to races that's genuinely capable of winning Super Twin races and at an affordable price. Oh, and to win a few Isle of Man TT races too. 
And don't forget, this CF Moto is an entirely different bike to anything else out there. It's not a Kawasaki or a Suzuki, it's its own beast. So it hasn't just been a case of seeing how everyone else turns their CF Moto into a super twin race bike, because it hasn't really been done before. That's where there has been a few minor teething problems, but they're getting fewer and further between with every round. And hopefully all my expert development work will pay off, and Chris will have a bike for the final two rounds that's capable of winning races. It's all yours, Sue.